Good morning, everyone. My name is Brandi Gans, and I'm the Chief Information Officer for Howard County. Today, thanks to the leadership of County Executive Dr. Ball, we're, here, we're proud to announce the winners of the Rise to the Challenge grants. Along with our Innovation Officer, Angela Cambellan, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, and the rest of, Howard County, of the Howard County team, we're excited to support these deserving nonprofits as they address critical community needs, needs exacerbated by the current pandemic. We look forward to the innovations and operational changes that you, that you will bring to our county with this support. We thank you for all you do, especially during these turbulent times. Now, to announce the winners of the Rise to the Challenge grants, I would like to introduce our county executive, Dr. Calvin Ball. Thank you so much, Brandy. And I just want to take a point of personal privilege. Brandy and her team have done a phenomenal job during this time, uh, especially given that about a third of our workforce in the county actually had to go virtually. So Brandy and her team had to ensure that we were delivering our county services uh, through about 3,000 county employees to our about 330,000 residents and over 10,000 businesses. And we haven't skipped a beat because of Brandy and her team. So please give her a big round of applause. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, it's been seven months to the day since Howard County's first confirmed case of COVID-19. And in that time, we have successfully flattened the curve, scaled up our essential testing and contact tracing, and allocated critical relief funds to both residents and businesses. Unfortunately, we've lost 130 of our residents, our neighbors, to this virus that continues to ravage the lives of so many people across our state and our nation, while wreaking havoc on our public health, welfare, and economy. Everyone has had to quickly adapt during this pandemic, whether you're a parent balancing work and childcare, a small business owner tr still trying to pay your employees, or a nonprofit still trying to provide services to our most vulnerable. For many of the organizations that provide vital services to our community, COVID has depleted their ability to fundraise and forced needed in-person services to online or even worse, the sideline. Many fundraising events have been canceled since March and there's so much uncertainty about when it will be safe to resume those large in-person gatherings. In our region, nonprofits employ one of every 10 workers. And nonprofit staff and their organizations are known for being able to stretch every dollar and make every cent count, even in the best economic times. However, in times like these, when we are asking them, counting on them to do more with less, they need our help too. And that's why we're here today to recognize these innovative nonprofits who provide jobs, value, and support to our community and ensure that they are able to survive and on the other side of this COVID-19 pandemic, thrive. And I thank you. Last month, we announced our intention to provide a million dollars in funding to our nonprofit community. We received nearly 90 applications with almost $8 million in requests. And while that reflects the great need in our community, today I am pleased to announce that we're exceeding our original scope and providing $1.5 million in HOCO Rise, Rise to the Challenge grants. 
and that will go to 40 organizations in our nonprofit community. These grants were made possible thanks to our CARES Act and the hard work of our federal delegation. And I'd like to once again thank our senators and our Congress people who are committed to our community. Today, we're highlighting 16 of our nonprofit recipients that specialize in human services and have experienced significant financial loss caused directly or indirectly by the, by the COVID-19 public health emergency. The organizations are helping to keep our residents safe and healthy. And organizations like Neighbor Ride, which provide trusted, reliable transportation for Howard County's aging residents to medical appointments, grocery shopping, and other essential errands. Since the pandemic, they have also added food delivery to their services to support many older residents who aren't as comfortable shopping in a busy store. Our friends at Bridges to Housing Stability, who are working hard to support our brothers and sisters who have lower incomes or are unfortunately homeless, and who have been destabilized during the pandemic. Many of these neighbors of ours don't have large savings and are with record unemployment this spring we know that it's critical to prevent more of our residents from falling into homelessness, especially as winter approaches. As many organizations have stepped up to support the gaps created by COVID-19, there are also organizations that have had to quickly adapt their critical services. Places like Camp Attaway, which provides year-round and summer programs for children with complex emotional and behavioral disorders. Camp Attaway has shifted to online programming and provided prepackaged camper boxes. And while summer activities like swimming and hiking couldn't happen, COVID-19 can't take away the special connections that are fostered by the camp. Just this morning, I was on with the arc of Howard County talking about all of the good work that we can do for our neighbors and residents with intellectual and developmental disabilities, not just to support them, but to empower them to thrive. And it's vital that all these organizations who have been severely impacted by this pandemic are able to provide these services and exist throughout this year and many years to come. Over the past seven months, many of our residents who are financially able have made sure to support their local small businesses to make sure that they are able to weather this storm. It's critical that we share that love and support with our nonprofit community as well. They too are feeling the financial impacts and their services are more important now than ever. While we wish that through the CARES Act funding we could have done much more, we are grateful for what we have and what we are able to do. Looking ahead to the next five months of our response and recovery, we must prepare for potential outbreaks with the imminent colder weather and continue to support our nonprofits as they modernize and digitize their services. Nonprofits bring out some of the best people and engage our community to support creative solutions and also bringing out some of the best in us. And Howard County's vibrant nonprofit organizations continue to give me hope. They show us every day that if we work together, we can overcome any obstacle. Let's continue to work together to ensure that our residents can be safe, healthy, and thriving for years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bell. When you hear your organization's name called, if you could please come up for a picture with the county executive. First, we have Ark of Howard County.
If you would like to say a few words, and also if you could please remember to state your na the name of your organization. Good morning. I know there's a lot of very deserving recipients here today, and we at the Arca Howard County want to say a huge thank you to Dr. Calvin Ball and Howard County uh, County Council and Administration here for their support of our organization. We're on the eve of 60 years of providing services for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities in Howard County. And as we all know, these past seven, eight months have been very challenging for all of us. This um, award will offer us an opportunity to continue to maintain the safety and well-being of our residents in uh, Howard County that uh, experience intellectual and developmental disabilities. So we would like to thank you so much for this lovely award. Autism Society. Good morning, everybody. I'm Melissa Rosenberg, Executive Director of Howard County Autism Society, and I'm here today this morning with uh, our president, Patrick Boxel. On behalf of everyone at HCAS and in the autism community, thank you to County Executive Ball and his team for making this opportunity available, and congratulations to our colleagues and fellow grantees. The last eight months have seen an avalanche of needs in the autism and disability community, and we anticipate that will only increase this fall as the pandemic drags on. Individuals with autism and their families struggle under the best of circumstances to access special education supports, mental health and informational resources, respite care, and financial assistance. COVID has only exacerbated these struggles. This funding will go a long way to addressing those needs. Thank you very much. Bridges of Housing Stability. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure and honor to be here today. I'm Jen Broderick, Executive Director of Bridges to Housing Stability. Bridges works to prevent and end homelessness through affordable housing solutions here in Howard County. Thank you, Dr. Ball and the grant committee members for this opportunity to help Bridges meet the growing need for eviction prevention and rapid rehousing in the county due to the pandemic. During the pandemic, Bridges has increased our eviction prevention cases by 500%. We've also been one of the leading agencies in the county's housing push to rehouse households that were unsheltered and at risk for COVID. 40 households now have a permanent housing solution. This has decreased the chronically homeless population significantly. Bridges is serving many more households and many of them don't have access to computers or even smartphones to access services online. This grant helps our staff meet those clients' needs safely going forward. Thank you from all of us at Bridges. Fern. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mike Mitchell. I'm the executive director of FERN. 
And I want to mention three eyes today. The first eye is immigrants. We serve immigrants who come from around the world to Howard County, and they cross perilous journeys to get here. And what we do is we make sure they have legal services, translation services, and social services. And because of the support from the county, we can do a better job of that. The second eye is isolation. COVID-19 has confronted us and the people we serve with isolation. And the best way to address that isolation is to actually figure out ways to reconnect. The third eye is innovation. And innovation is the way we will create more connections. And with this funding, we'll be able to do that. In the end, it's not about I, it's about we. And what Fern is doing is trying to bring together the we so that we can be innovative. We would not be able to do that with the support of you, county executive, and the county overall. So we're grateful and we thank you. Community Action Council. Good morning. I'm Bita Dehoff. I'm the president of Community Action Council of Howard County. And on behalf of our board of directors and more than 50,000 individuals that we serve because of the county, thank you. Thank you so much. Community Action Council is Community Action Council is a private nonprofit organization in the community that uh, provides services to individuals and families who find themselves face to face with a financial crisis. And traditionally, we support the low income families. And what the pandemic has proved to us as a community is that there are so many individuals who are in need of immediate services and uh, safety net types of services that our organization provides. And we know that these are not traditional times. So if you find yourself needing housing assistance, struggling how to, p to figure out how to pay for your rent or for your energy costs, or you need food, please reach out to Community Action Council of Howard County. That's why we are here. This grant is going to be used in our early childhood education program, and it's going to use technology to bring the classroom into the living room for our children who are ages three to five. And it's going to help us reduce the learning gap for low-income children in our community. Thank you so much for doing that, sir. Thank you. Humanum. Good morning. Thank you so much. My name is Cindy Truitt, and I'm the interim CEO for Humanum. And I'm, on behalf of our board of directors and staff and individuals served, we are so thankful and appreciative for this grant and this honor, and so thankful um, that we are working under the leadership of an impactful and innovative county executive, Dr. Ball, and his team and the Howard County government. We're privileged to provide services here for almost 50 years, and during these as everyone says, unprecedented times. We've both increased our capacity along with our partners, grassroots, as well as the Howard County government, but we've also seen a retraction in services and our ability to support those with intellectual disabilities. This grant is going to help us not only digitize our programming and innovate more creative ways to create access for folks and decrease loneliness, isolation, but also help families and individuals in our service get access to technical equipment as well as access to online services. So thank you so much for your innovation and your impactful leadership. Neighbor Ride.
Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Bruce Fulton. I'm the uh, executive director of NeighborRide. Um, on behalf of NeighborRide and our board of directors, I want to thank uh, County Executive Ball and uh, his team with the county government for this uh, support. NeighborRide uh, provides volunteer-based transportation to older adults in our community since 2004. Obviously, uh, with the COVID pandemic, older adults are one of the most vulnerable populations uh, impacted. That's also impacted our ability as nonprofits to deliver services uh, to the older adult community. So with this grant, NeighborRide is going to be able to build out and scale up what we're calling NeighborRide Assist, and that's going to be a platform we'll be able to offer to fellow nonprofits as well as um, faith-based organizations, community government, to help them or really assist them deliver services to the older adult community. So born out of uh, the, the crisis food delivery, but there's opportunities. We've worked with the Loan Closet, uh, faith-based organizations, uh, potentially with the, the library as well. So again, thank you to Dr. Ball and his team for making this, uh, uh, this new launch um, available. Thank you. Rebuilding together, HOCO. Hi everyone, I'm Helen Little, I'm the board chair, oh, and I'm short. <laughs> I'm Helen Little, I'm the board chair of Rebuilding Together Howard County. First off, I wanted to thank Dr. Ball and the county for their continued support of our organization. Rebuilding Together Howard County is the local affiliate of the national nonprofit dedicated to community revitalization. We have provided critical home repairs to low-income homeowners for over 29 years and continue to do so during the pandemic. Due to the pandemic, we were forced to cancel our annual Rebuilding Day event. On that day, around 1,000 volunteers were going to repair dozens of homes free of charge for low-income homeowners. Now we've shifted our year-round repair program to use only professional contractors instead of volunteers. This funding will be used to streamline our home inspection process and to implement tools so that we can better collaborate while working remote. We're so thankful for this funding from the county so that we can continue to provide vital home repairs for our neighbors in need. Thank you. <laughs> Grassroots. Good morning, everybody. I'm Anna Katz with Grassroots Crisis Intervention Center, and I would like to thank Dr. Ball and the county administration for all of their incredible support for those on behalf of those we serve. Uh, they've been concerned about the welfare of our homeless residents um, since the pandemic began um, and have provided unique <coughs> ways to make sure that everybody who is homeless uh, is sheltered safely. This grant will allow us um, to provide a unique way to shelter folks um, by giving them individual rooms so that um, we keep them safe during the pandemic. Thank you so much. My Covenant Place. Hello, my name is Letitia Carter. I am the executive director of My Covenant Place. I am here with our board treasurer. We are a private community-based nonprofit organization that's dedicated to helping victims of crime through advocacy, support, and wraparound services. 
Since COVID-19, we weren't sure how things were going to look or what we were going to do as an agency. We knew that we had to pivot and we needed to become creative with the resources that we had and the services that we needed to provide for our clients. Daily assessments led us to adopt a telehealth model, which will be safe for our clients, our staff, and the community. The rise to the challenge grant will allow us to secure equipment, provide ongoing program, and cover personnel expenses. I'll end by saying that this was so fitting for us as October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Thank you, Howard County, Dr. Calvin Ball, for your leadership and for your executive team. Thank you. Sobar. It says good morning, but good afternoon. I'm Beth Harbinson, founder of SOBAR. Dr. Ball, I first of all want to thank you and the county for your thoughtful, comprehensive response to COVID. Your decisions and action have kept us safe and minimized economic loss. Our mission is to encourage choice in how we celebrate by providing non-alcoholic beverages to consumers and hosting alcohol-free events. With alcohol now available for delivery to our homes, it's a critical time for us to provide alternatives and to continue to employ people in recovery. The epidemic of substance abuse disorder has not subsided during COVID. This funding will allow us to build the infrastructure we need to serve our clients through the product we are developing for delivery, Sobar in a Box. Plans for our virtual alcohol-free New Year's Eve event are moving ahead. And stigma, shame, and isolation are big contributing factors to relapse. And on an, and an occasion where many in recovery feel left out and lonely, this event offers a safe haven. Over 30% of our attendees will be there from halfway houses and sober living facilities to party safely as we ring in the new year this year. Thank you. Voices for Children. Good morning. I'm Erica Burnham, the Director of Voices for Children, which is the Howard County's Court Appointed Special Advocate Program. On behalf of myself, my staff, um, my board, and the children we serve, I would like to thank Dr. Ball as well as his entire team for the opportunity to receive this grant. We work with children who are in foster care in Howard County, and this grant is going to allow us to support them educationally for those who are impacted and struggling because of the virtual learning. Um, that's going on in our environment right now. So we really appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Way Station, part of Shepherd Pratt. Good morning, my name is Cortina Dard and I'm representing Way Station, a part of Shepherd Pratt, the largest um, private nonprofit provider of mental health, substance abuse, special education, developmental disability, and community support services in Maryland. Our outpatient mental health clinic serves clients in Howard County and the surrounding area. This grant comes at a critical time as it will allow our organization to serve the most vulnerable of our population, those struggling with severe mental illness. 
and those that may be at risk if they do not receive urgent evaluation and treatment. Through this grant, we will be able to expand our behavioral health rapid access program via a telehealth model of care to serve clients sooner, provide them with vital resources, and introduce those in crisis to outpatient care, which is critical during the COVID-19 pandemic. We would also like to thank Howard County Executive Dr. Calvin Ball, the Howard County government, and the Rise to the Challenge grant team for entrusting us with this opportunity. We look forward to working together to ensure the best possible outcomes for those we serve in our community, and congratulations to all of the grantees. Korean American Senior Association. Good morning. Thank you so much, Dr. Ball and admin staff who work so hard to make this happen. My name is Sue Song. I'm a president of Korean American Senior Association in Howard County. Our mission is to have Korean seniors engaged in community at large by providing human services and access for health care to maintain their well-being with the dignity and the respect for their last chapter of life in our community. Even though Howard County has a wealth of information for health care and community resources for seniors, Korean population were not able to have that access because of the language barrier. For the most of the Korean seniors, our organization is the only outlet for the social connection with the friends and to receive the resources information, include management of COVID-19 in Korean. However, when we had to survive during this pandemic, we couldn't keep our organization anymore. We had a plan to dissolve our organization. Our members are not able to contribute membership fee. Small Korean-owned businesses are suffering themselves uh, from COVID-19 and were not able to help us financially. Therefore, most of the Korean seniors had to stay home alone without talking to anybody and may, may not have food on the table. Some members describe themselves as in individuals who are in the jail without the wall. However, this grant will help us to protect and preserve our organization, and we can look for the bright side together for the hope and strength to cross the bridge of a cultural obstacle. I really appreciate the county exec, Dr. Ball, and his team who outreach diverse hidden population like us in our community so that every individual human will be able to adapt to a new way of living. Thank you so much for giving us the hope. Thank you so much. Camp Attaway. Good afternoon. My name is Sue Ann Shafley, and I have the privilege of serving as Executive Director for Camp Attaway. Camp Attaway has been providing a therapeutic summer camp for children with emotional and behavioral challenges, as well as family education and support groups that, that are facilitated by child psychologists. 
Camp Attaway is incredibly grateful to Dr. Calvin Ball, Angela Cabalon, and their respective staffs. We are grateful that they are partnering with the local nonprofits that are on the front lines and are providing critical services to meet the needs of Howard County residents caused by COVID. Because of the pandemic, families who have a child with special needs have lost out, outside vital supports, including school, mental health services, in addition to the loss of extended families, childcare, and religious groups which frankly they relied on to keep their heads above water. Research shows that the negative effects that people feel as a result of the pandemic will, continu will continue to necessitate additional mental health services and enhanced supports to keep families healthy, not just during the acute phase of the pandemic, but post pandemic as well. By recognizing this reality and implementing programs that directly support the mental health of our most vulnerable segments of Howard County's population, the county is being proactive in funding innovative programs and services that will mitigate the long-term effects of COVID. Thank you. Columbia Community Care. Hello everyone, my name is McKenna Burns um, and I work for Columbia Community Care and Equity for HC. First, we'd like to thank Dr. Calvin Ball, Howard County and the CARES Act for this funding. We truly appreciate it. Um, so far, before, since the pandemic, we have fed over 40,000 people um, and 6, 000, over 6,000 households. Um, and we know that our work is vital and important for our community and for our people. And so we do this work for you. We truly appreciate the support. Thank you again. Thank you all for coming today. We appreciate your continued service and your commitment to Howard County and look forward to the difference we know you'll continue to make. This group gathered together reminds me of the words of young poet Maddie Stepanek, who said, unity is strength. When there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. So let's go achieve wonderful things together. This concludes our presentation. Thank you very much.